I, w I want to quickly record this video because I finally managed to um, create a Redux store uh, and share some state between different screens. Um, this was very challenging for me and I'm very afraid that I'll forget it in like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so I thought I'd make a video to show how I did it, uh, how it works and how you can do it as well. Um, this is not a tutorial. It's more of a um, behind the scenes explanation uh, of what I did. All right, so first the end result. Um, let me just make this a bit bigger so you can see it more clearly. And let's do it like this. So here we have um, a couple of screens. We have a calendar view, history view. Uh, we have a journal view, stats and settings. Uh, and in the calendar view, we actually show the state. The state is simply an array with some messages in there. If we now click on press me, what it does is that it dispatches an item and actually adds something to the state. How this uh, happens, I'll show you later, but now just watch what happens when I press press me. Press me now adds another new item to the state. And the state is a global state that I define here in my app, uh, which is called store. I can do it again. I can go to journal and I can click press me. Then it goes, adds another new item. There's no need to pass state through the different screens. You just pass the store once. All right, so now the question is, how did I do this, right? Because um, it's very nice that I managed to do this, but how did I do this? So first thing you want to do is you want to make a new folder called Redux. In that folder, you want to create a store.js file. Store.js um, imports create store from Redux, and we import the root reducer from the reducer file, which I'll get into later. Then we create the store and we export the store. So this is a store that's going to hold all our data, basically. Next thing you want to do is you want to create a reducer file in the Redux folder. In my case, the reducers are very simple because I only have one so far, and it, this is more about the general idea behind it. What you want to do is first you want to set an initial state. Oh, maybe I can draw, actually. First thing you want to do is you want to set the state. You want to set the initial state. Uh, and then we create a root reducer that based on uh, the specific action type, which you get the add item. So we basically make a reducer um, and that reducer has an action which is called add item. Add item spreads out the state, which the initial state is defined here. So it spreads out the messages and then it adds a new message to the messages item in there. And that becomes a new state when we click add item. Now, this is the root reducer, right? Uh, we also have the store. The only thing we need is actions and these are our actions. Action is simply a JSON payload with a type. So this is our reducer, our actions, and then we have our store here. Now, the trick is now when we go to our app.js, we have to wrap the entire, uh, we have to wrap the entire app in a provider component, which we import up here from React Redux. Uh, and that gives basically access to the global store in every component that we have. Then, for example, if we click on journal here, we click on press me, what happens is that we go to the press me page, so journal screen. And now what we do is we we set the dispatch to the use dispatch hook, which is a shorthand. And then once we press the button, we dispatch that particular action. Now you might wonder where do we get that action from? That action comes from up here where we import it. We basically, our reducer has an action. You could basically split this also up, but because our actions are so uh, simple, we, we put them with the reducers. Add item is a function that returns a JSON payload with a type, which you can see here. It's a function that returns a JSON payload with a type called add item. Um, and what we do is we dispatch that to the store. And then based on the item, based on the type, our reducer exactly knows how to change the state based on the type that we gave it. Once we click on, once we click on press me, add item gets dispatched to the store and the root reducer knows exactly how to change the state such that uh, the, 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 such that to change the state. In calendar screen, we do nothing more than use selector, use use selector, to uh, load in the messages from the state. So basically we say, okay, from the state, we only want the messages. That's what we call messages. And then we simply show them by mapping over them. And that's how we basically uh, show the state. I know this is not a very clear explanation, um, but the important things is that you first, you need to create a store, which has a single reducer called the root reducer. 
Then you need to have reducers, which basically, given a state and given an action, completely know how to change the state such that the state gets updated with the action. And then you also need the actions, which is just a function that returns a uh, that returns a JavaScript object with a type payload. Could also have more stuff like value. So that's the store reducer actions. Then what you need to do is you need to wrap your whole thing in a provider component. Oops, in a provider com in a provider component here, such that the whole state has access to the store. And then you can use the um, you can use the use selector and use dispatch hooks to get the data or dispatch actions to your store. Yeah. So that's basically how I managed to share state across screens. I'm sorry if this was very confusing because, because this was very confusing for me and I hope maybe in the future uh, I'll make a better video. Uh, but this is the best you're going to get from me right now. So uh, thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.